Yo. How's everybody doing? This is probably my first. What's up, Semper Fi? This is probably my first Monday stream, yeah? I don't think I've done this before. A little bit midweek stuff with Devin, Reef Dudes. Man, that soundtrack was playing, wasn't it? See, I messed that up. What's up, Bobby? What's up, Taylor? Um. <clears throat> So this is a random Monday. I miss the weekend. I was, uh, my parents live in Northern Virginia. So we went down there to wish my mom happy Mother's Day on Saturday. What's up, Evan? And got back kind of late. Wasn't prepared. Didn't have everything, everything ready. So, uh, what's up, Seth? So skip, skip Saturday. Yesterday was Mother's Day, and I'm not live streaming on Mother's Day. I know better. That would be a, that would be a, a D move. So here we are on a Monday. I hope everybody's doing well. I figure we're just gonna get right to it. How's that sound? Does that work? Um. Dig it. Shout out to this fool. Come on. You're driving a Ford Focus. You doubled up in a compact because your spaces are so tight. I mean, I'm parked here. Maybe you can't see. You can see. You can see. I'm, that's me. And, and I'm snug up in there. And somebody else. And then this guy. Don't be this guy. That's not cool. Don't be this guy. Portugal. What's up, Nelson? Uh, I was in the Azores. That's as close as I got to Portugal. That would have been in 1990. And that was a cool trip. That's as close as I got. I got to spend me some escudos and I had some good food and some good cheese. Walked around some cobblestone streets. That was good. So that's as close as I got. What's up, Aaron? Habisai, isn't it Monday? These are normally on... Steven, these are normally on Saturday. Sunday is my fallback. And since Sunday was Mother's Day, I skipped that business and we dropped in on a Monday. Nelson. Ah, see, I agree. The Azores is a cool place. If you ever want to go someplace on the middle of the Atlantic, 800 miles off the Portuguese coast, go to the Azores. At least in the early 90s, it was nice. Um, Yeah, we covered this guy. Don't be this guy. What are we talking about today? Ooh, first. See, look. Um, This is... A Gen 2 Radeon. And this is a Gen 2 Radeon. This is an AI Prime non-HD. I'm going to move this a little bit. Can I do that? Yeah, I can do this. Let's see. Does that sound all right? Non-HD. Uh, I tested this light this morning, and I'll publish those results with the rest of the lights that I'm working on. Uh, but this, not impressed. 30-watt light. You know what also is a 30-watt light? Mm, this uh, Orphic OR2 Blue Plus. Also, this Reef Bright that's underneath there. That's also a 30-watt. Um, all this is gone. This is what used to be over the frag tank. <clears throat> and, uh, and I cleaned that business up. Now, look, we're starting to get a little cleaner. It's going to take some time. I'm not, um, I'm very utilitarian when it comes to installing stuff 
over the frag tank. But in this particular case, uh, if we go back, you see this extruded aluminum, this 10 millimeter extruded aluminum. I love that stuff called Maker Beam. You can buy it in kits. I use that 10 millimeter extruded aluminum to create the third um, mount. So one, two, three mounts on those um, GHL Mitris LX7s. And I got this little bracket here that's the, the middle mount that also holds the lights in line. So hanging lights, I don't know if you've played with like two hanging lights. They get all wonky and they don't align up right. Or I should point there. Um, <laughs> oh, how to do that? That way is um, it keeps them nice and aligned, and they look pretty good. Let me check here. Sure, still has a nice place. Yep, I agree. Uh, Nelson, uh, friends of ours, visited. Uh, that was a few. That's probably four or five years ago now. They. Uh, they went just as a couple, and they, uh, wah, it's getting a little rough under there. Look, 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 it's getting a little, uh, pandemic hair, stay at home hair. Yeah, pretty cool place. So, if you first, if you haven't played with extruded aluminum, and if you don't know what an erector set is from being a kid, go buy you one. It's like $100 for a whole kit, and it gives you a bunch of these little pieces to play with, and you can build stuff, and you can... I, I didn't know what to do with it. I bought it just to figure out what to do with it, and like a lot of things, uh, I, I bought it and found a solution. Found it to be a solution for a problem I didn't know I had, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so these lights, these lights are cool. These lights are really bright. These are way brighter than... The 150 watt Gen 2 Radeon XR30s that used to live there. These are a couple hundred watt GHLs. This light is in the front and it's over most of the stuff that can handle a whole lot of light. This light in the back, I have it turned down a little bit um, so it doesn't cook what's back there. And I'm still working on that. I found a little baby jawbreaker today. It's crawling around back there on that rack. I got to peel it off and stick it in something so it sticks on something. But that's way back here in the corner. Um, so pretty excited about that. I have some more yet to do. Um, and if you follow along on Instagram, um, I did add another GHL doser to take care of my, uh, my Red Sea trace colors. So I have that dialed in now too. So looking at ICP test get some of my results back and know where I stand because it would be good to know that. I used to make my hanging brackets as well. Still not as clean as... Mm, I would argue um, that that ain't clean. Really effective because I could hang that reef bright right there where the fans are on the XR30 just low enough so it didn't impede the fans. And I could hang this Orphic OR2 off of there with no trouble at all. I'm also using the same thing over the display, and that's how I hang that 470 bar with a Gen 4 Radeon XR30 Pro. Um, and that works really well. So I'm able to hang kind of like how people do T5 hybrids with their big, powerful LEDs. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing uh, cheap bars to give me some pop in 470 range with the Gen 4 XR30, and it works really well. Yeah, there you go. Make a shelving unit. I like extruded aluminum. Go play with that stuff. Go to 8020.net or go to Amazon and look for Maker Beam. Either one. Nothing else in here. You can see I have a dose, and that is hooked up to my uh, Apex Junior that lives underneath this tank, and that thing just does auto water changes, and it works really well. So this is the illumination. So this is cool. GHL has a very unique uh, puck layout on the bottom of their lights. And I definitely love Maker Beam. Also love... See, there we go. Semperfy knows what's up. So these are two separate GHL Mitris LX7s. 
and and it because of the layout of the LEDs on the bottom of the light, it really throws a really it throws a nice blanket. So not not a lot of shadows, if any. The only shadowing I'm getting is underneath all these um, Montes, which I need to trim back. So hit me up if you want some purple. If you're close, you can just come by, pick up, do a porch pickup. But I got to trim these back. They're getting too big. I may have said that last week, but still too big. So whatever. Dig these lights. Uh, they're really working out for me. There's Moki's clam back there that he's going to get back soon. You hear me, Moki? Um, but so far, really liking those lights. Controllability is good. Uh, I need to, and I still haven't done it, and it's still sitting here. I need to stick this thing inside the Profilux 4 so I can control the lights with my phone. I haven't done that yet. Let me look. eBay has cheap. Uh, yep, there you go. Get some, go get some extruded aluminum and do some playing. I like that Maker Beam kit only because it comes with all of the hardware, all the connecting hardware, so it gives you a good... You don't have to wonder what you need, so you just buy that kit. It comes with beams, it comes with angles, it comes with all the screws and the nuts and a little tightener driver doohickey, a little socket, and it works really well. So it's a good way to go learn. Once you do that, jump in big and start making fish tank stands and whatever. Um, like Than at Tidal Gardens. That's what's holding up his new new build tanks. Um, this thing. So, I have seen... This is the Red Sea LED 90. I think that's what it's called, right? Red Sea LED 90. Uh, and it is absolutely a dense matrix... LED similar to a Kessel and it is rated at 90 watts. Yeah, Erector set. See, there it is. Um, yeah, uh, this is the boxes portion. This is the current booze portion. I got a couple other underneath here. This stuff's good. This is kind of foo foo beer and I like it. 20 the right size. I can cut it. Haven't tried drilling. Yeah, dude. You can, uh, Brandon. Sorry. I'm going to back up. Um, you can, in this particular case, I don't know that I could. Ooh, what happened? That's a punk. I don't. Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. There, this, is, this is some real time business right there. If you. Boy, huh? This is where alkalinity and calcium come out. It's very uh, utilitarian, like I mentioned before. But I drilled this piece in the center, and uh, and I have hardware coming up through the middle that I ground down on a disc, so it would sit in there real nice and not fall out. And then this screws into that, so you can totally you can drill it out. You can do whatever you need to do. You can do surface mount connections, like I have here. Um, this is drilled out and then screwed into the top of the mitris in the mounting hole. So no new holes, no tap, no whatever. Uh, everything's everything's clean and it kind of works. <sighs> right. Red Sea. 90 watt light. So this is probably other 90 watt lights. Uh, A360X. XR15, they're 100 watts, but whatever. When I when I say 90 or 100, it's the same thing. So, AI... I don't know which one. 26, 30, oh, 32, maybe that's 100 watts. I'll have to look it up. Um, but what I'm trying to do is lump... Uh, like wattage lights together because theoretically like wattage lights should put out uh, similar par. They're going to do it differently because they have different form factors. They have different LEDs. Um, some are more efficient. Some have better cooling than others. I'm not getting into that. What I'm getting into is in this particular case, this 90 watt light 
what kind of light does it put out? What kind of what kind of par does it put out? Or what kind of spectrum does it put out? Um oh, you know what I'm not know what I'm not prepared to talk about? And I need to dig it up real quick so I have what I need. So that's the spectrum. So this thing, this light lets you set two things, three things, I'm sorry, three things. Let you set blue, and it lets you set white, and it lets you set um, moonlight. I didn't mess with the moonlight. Oh, shout out to Lynn Reef Nerd for letting me borrow her light, because this is cool. Because I've seen people talking about this thing, and there isn't a lot of, I'm scrolling while I'm looking. There isn't a lot of information on it beyond, I think, BRS's initial review of this light. So I I test my lights, any light that shows up here. What's up, Ricardo? Uh, I, I test out all lights exactly the same way. I'm not checking for... Um, I'm not checking for how it covers the whole tank. What I'm checking for is at 24 inches below that light, and I'm testing every light the same way, what is the par and what is the spectrum. So if at 24 inches, and I'm going to try to work out, I'm going to try to work out how to determine what your par may be based on elevation, um, that's less than 24 inches, but at 24 inches, uh, at the spectrum, you would run the light, not at a hundred percent because nobody's going to run it. Some people might run their lights at hundred percent, but generally, well, actually in this case, I ran that light at hundred percent cause that's how it runs hundred percent. When I say hundred percent, all channels. So I test the light at, um, the expected spectrum, so whatever I can produce in terms of AB+, plus, if I can replicate AB+, plus, that is the spectrum that I'm going to run. And then I run AB+, plus, not all channels, just the channels that give me AB+, plus at 100%. So that's the max light output a light is going to give me at that particular spectrum, and that's the best it's going to do. <coughs> This light, along with GHL, and I don't know about Orphic because I ain't tested that, and Kessel, this is the third light that I have tested that has legitimate UV. By legitimate UV, we all know, because I keep talking about it, that's anything below 400 nanometers. So from this line down is UV. From this line down is near UV. From this line up is just violet and the rest of the spectrum, the rest of the visual spectrum. Visible, sorry, visible spectrum. So uh, this light has legitimate UV, right around 382, I think, is where the peak was, which is just right there. I don't know if that matters, but it's just worth noting. Uh, it has this weird little 400 bump, um, 410, sorry. Some lights have a 410 bump. And then it's got this super narrow um, 450 peak, which is too bad. If I'm making this light, I'm at least throwing some 470 in there because that makes it look a little better to your eyes. Um, but still, there's nothing really wrong with a 450 other than it's just 450. So it's not including any 420, obviously. That's really low here. It's not including any 470, which is, is a little disappointing. But it is producing a nice 450 peak um, at a decent... Decent par at 24 inches, which was 203. Uh, in terms, in terms of, by way of comparison, a Gen 4 XR30 Pro will put out about 330 par. This is putting out 203 par 
at 24 inches open air centered underneath the light, which is, like I said, I, that's how I test all my lights because I just want consistency of test. I'm not going to do a grid and check each just to know what the what the light district what the flight fall off is on the edge i'm only doing single point tested three times understand what the spectrum and par is dead center underneath every single light i test that way it's just consistent across the board that's just what i do so if now here's where the budget budget proposition jumps in here if you could find this light cheap because it's reasonably priced it was what is this thing 250 compare that to no that's not right is that right let me look see i'm not prepared and see 90 350 comparable 100 watt lights are close to a hundred dollars more so this is a budget light at 100 watts, 90 watts, producing a decent amount of par. So what I'm looking for now is to test a Kessel A360X and uh, a Gen 5 XR15 because of what I want to know is I already know the spectrum is going to be good on both those lights. What I want to know is their par at the usable spectrum at 100%. Does that make sense? Because I want to compare this light, which is cheaper, um, to those bigger name lights, which are more expensive. If you can get, if you can get this light, oops, for cheap, somebody's selling it cheap because they think it sucks, and I think there's people out there that feel that way. If you bought this and you bought one of those AliExpress bars I talked about at the 470 nanometers, then you got a pretty solid light option there. So that light and one of those bars, if you found that light for 300 bucks and you bought a $50 bar, that's a pretty, pretty damn good 100-watt light. So uh, problems with this light. <clears throat> uh, the app was meh, but it totally works. The power supply ain't cool. Um, it's a 90-watt light that full power is running 100 watts. And the power supply can handle that load, but that thing gets smoking hot. It was really hot. It's the hottest power supply of any light that I've tested. Um, and that's not cool. Hydra. Hydra 26 to play around with. Oh, Yeah. Please, if you do have a Hydra 26 that I could test, I won't have it for too long, and that would be awesome. I just want to check, because that's a 100-watt light, right? Uh, I want to check the part coming out of that thing. So, interesting light. Um, spread was good. Spectrum is good enough, but I would add a light to it to make the spectrum better. I would just add 470, and it would give it a, a, a little fatter blue, which would make this light both functional in terms of growing SPS over a not-too-deep tank. So a deep that's like a tank that's 16 inches or less, this light would work. If you add that bar, a 24-inch bar, over that 16-inch deep tank, then you have a, uh, you have a legitimate lighting solution that you possibly have found used and bought cheap. It's not bad. I was, uh, cool. Thanks, Semper Fi. Um, not bad. What did I say? 100, 200 par? 100 par? 200 par? 203.2. .2 with a spectrum peak of 452. 200 par 24 inches open air is a is a is a solid number um i think my ai prime non-hd was like 45 par really low half th one third of the watts <clears throat> so keep that in mind 200 par open air 24 inches 
solid solution. Give it a look. If you're looking for a cheap light and you can find it used, not uh, not that bad. Let's see. Cool. I see that. I will. And thank you very much. Calc. Oh, wait. I have it right here if you want to see it. It's a decent, it's, it's kind of, I don't know about this. I don't know about this thing. I don't know about this mount. Um, I've seen some mention online. I did not mount this on my tank, but I've seen some mention online that it's hard to get this thing parallel over the tank. Um, this thing's kind of, I don't know. This is too complicated. They didn't make, need to make it this complicated. They're better. Maybe it's just because it's the head of this thing is damn heavy. Um, I don't know. It was easier to connect the Wi-Fi. You just push the button, and the app found it, or you your phone found this, and then you you do the thing where you you put in your Wi-Fi and the password, and boom, it connects. I can't tell if that's glass or plastic. If it's plastic and they're spitting under 400 nanometers out of this thing, then that put that could discolor over time. Maybe it's glass. I don't know. But, yeah. Didn't suck. So, it's also my first 100 watt light. So maybe it sucks and I just don't know. But I was, I was expecting way worse, to be honest. And I was pleasantly surprised with how it tested. Narrow blue. Not a fan of narrow blue. But I know what light to add to make it not narrow. So... And I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind mashing up lights to give me the spectrum that I need. I think that's a reasonable way to approach it. But anyway, back to calc. I took a poll, and it was like thirty percent of the people who responded. No, it was less than that. But some people dose calc wasa. It's a decent, balanced solution. Uh, that will add alkalinity and calcium to your tank for cheap. Benefits of calc, it's balanced. You just dose single part and it works like a champ. Oh, I'm trying to not say that anymore. Another no, another thing, this this looks like this looks like a cherry bomb, and I got that, and I kind of like that, so I like that. That's on the bag right there, the BRS bag. But anyway. <clears throat> Another benefit is it is it tends to raise pH in the tank. Now, I've seen people that dose this overnight. I'm not going to do that because then you're going to get an alkalinity spike at night, and I don't think you need to do that. I just dose this the same rate all day long. It's constantly dripping in my tank. Um, it has worked really well for me. I'm dosing about... A half a gallon of this stuff a day, all year long. And we'll get to how I do that in a minute. But that's it. Half a gallon every day. Constant dose. And I get I get good pH. I get good pH for a couple reasons, and we'll talk about that too. So remind me. But uh, I have had good luck. Now, some people say, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. But if you live in a climate that support it, supports it, go ahead and do it. But some people say to put calc in your ATO. Now that I, I find that to be, I find that to be challenging in a couple different ways. First, how much are you putting in your ATO, and you can you be consistent with that? Does that Where's that calc go when it's in your ATO? Does it fall to the bottom? Does it stay in solution? Is it homogenous inside your auto top off? So like, is it the same concentration no matter where you are in your ATO? I don't know. Do you live in a place that has seasons? And if so, don't do this because you'll hear a couple things. But during the winter... I've got an Ecobee thermostat that trends year-round, so I know what my humidity is in my house. During the winter, 
my average humidity in my house is 30%. During the summer, my average humidity is 50, and that's with the air conditioner running. So if somebody tells you that it's the same in the summertime because you're running your air conditioner, that's a bunch of hooey because it is it is absolutely, in my house, 20% less in the winter. And that's easy to understand. Humidity in the winter is pretty low. It's dry in your house. That's when you walk around, you shock your family and you giggle, you shuffle your feet. And, mm-hmm. But in the summertime, there's a whole lot more relative moisture in the air and you feel that in terms of humidity. So air conditioner running in the summer is still higher than the winter. In the winter, when humidity is 24%, your tank, or lower, your tank is evaporating way more water than it does in the summer. I'll go through an ATO container in the winter fast. In the summer, even if the air conditioner is running most of the day, I don't. That ATO will last way longer. So if you are, let's pretend that calc in your ATO is homogenous, it's mixed up and it's always the same concentration, um, which I don't think it is. If you're dosing more in the winter, if you're if you're not dosing more in the winter, if your ATO is running more in the winter, then you're dosing more calc in the winter and dosing less calc when your ATO doesn't run as long as much in the summer. So you're not being consistent. You're throwing in instability because of seasonal evaporative rates. My suggestion is is you dose a constant rate throughout the day from a separate container from ATO from your automatic top off. That way you're always dosing the same calc and then your ATO is just making up the difference. In my case, I'm limited to a half a gallon because I have a small sump. If I dose more than a half a gallon in the summer, my high level alarm will be tripped. It it will uh, it will be putting too much water into my sump and the sump level will rise too high and my alarm will go off. If uh, I could dose way more calc in the winter because of the evaporation, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to maintain stability. So during the summer, figure out how much your calc, how much your tank, how much your sump, how much your ATO, all of that, how much all of that is working together and figure out how much calc We'll go back to this, but figure out how much calc your tank can handle. Now, that assumes that your tank can handle that much calc. So, before you do anything at all, test your 24-hour alkalinity drop. Do an alkalinity test with like a HANA checker. Wait 24 hours. Do another alkalinity test with the HANA checker. And then understand how much your tank has dropped, not dosing anything at all. And then there's a couple reef calculators online, and I'll leave them in the description below when I get my act together and start filling in descriptions below. And you can use that calculator based on your tank volume to understand how much lime water, saturated lime water, which is what calc is, how much you can put in a tank to raise you to your target alkalinity. So then once, you air, once you're able to maintain your target alkalinity and your corals are growing and you're using more and you adjust and you're using more and you adjust and using more and you adjust, like me, you get to the point where you hit your limit. That's it. I can't dose any more than a half a gallon because my 2.2 DKH 24-hour drop requires too much calc and it fills up my sump. So I make up the difference with two part. And that's a whole different conversation. We don't need to go into that. So understand your 24-hour alkalinity drop. Dose based on that requirement. And dose that much all day long, every hour, or whatever. You can use, I use, what I, I use bulk resupply calc. It's consistent. It comes in this cool little bag. I dump it in a container that I keep it in, and that's how I mix it up. I mix it up in a a legit five-gallon container, but it's actually one of these. You find these at 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 your local fish store, at your LFC, and 
you can do two things. You can dump the seawater out, or you can dump it in your tank. You can use it as uh, water change water, either way. But keep these little containers, because they're awesome. This is a 4.4 gallon container. I keep these. I have, when I need a new container, I just go buy a jug of the seawater, and then I get the container, because it's cheaper than buying a container. So, you get a container, you get some seawater, whatever. It works out. Uh, and I just, I, and this is measured in teaspoons. So you just, in this 4.4, I put nine teaspoons in, and that's saturated. It's a little more than saturated, but saturated. I fill that thing up with water, and I give it a shake. That container lives in my garage. Every morning, I go grab that. This is how sophisticated my calc dosing is, and this is really all you need. I grab that container. I give it a couple shakes. I come in, and I pour it into the dosing container that's in my closet. And I refill that container, and I put the lid back on it. That's it. No calc stir, no calc reactor, no... And I, I don't understand why I haven't used one, so I can't talk about it. But I don't know why people use those when you could just dose it straight from a container and it's just fine. No stir bars, no none of that. So I legit shake it up in that, pour it in the dosing container, and that's it. I can go two days. It will holds a little over a gallon. Um so I can go two days without refilling that container. If I go longer than that, then I start sucking air. And I lose a little bit of alkalinity like I did this week. So you can do that. It works just fine. It works fine for me. There's probably some whatever. Try it. It works. I've been doing it for years. You can use this timer, this near pow timer, which I really trust. I like these timers. I got a whole ton of them, and I'm slowly removing them as I add more technology to the tank. These timers have treated me super well. These are interval timers or timer timers. So you can set it to go off at 0200, like this is, um, or you can set it for every X number of seconds or X number of minutes, and then it turns on for X number of seconds or X number of minutes. It's, an, it's a great timer. So you, if you use this timer with that pump, this is a bulk resupply, 1.1 ml per minute pump. That timer with that pump, bulletproof. First, that pump doesn't pump a lot. It pumps really slowly, 1.1 per minute. So the opportunity for you to screw up is lessened because that thing isn't pumping all that fast. What's up, Remy? So give it a shot. If you're interested in calc dosing, understand what your 24-hour alkalinity drop is. Use the calculator that I'll put in the description below. And use a timer with a really slow pump, and you put yourself in a pretty good spot. Have yourself a container. Fill that container up every day, once a week, whatever you need. Like, if I should just keep that five-gallon container in my closet. I just have too many other containers in there right now. And then I could, do, I could just, I could dose out of that container all day long for, I don't know, eight days, nine days. That'd be pretty sweet. I wouldn't have to mess with it at all. So that's my dog, Lucy. Those are my daughter's feet. She took this picture and sent it to me. That's Lucy. Although she looks cute, she's evil. And she's a bit of a, a bia. She has a little bit of attitude. But she's still a good dog, so there's that. <sighs> Backing it up. Selfish TV is in the house. That's all I had. How long have I been on? I ain't been on all that long. This is a short one. Make you wait like a couple days. And then... <laughs> What's up, Neil? And... And then, and now we're looking at... Now we're looking at... I got nothing else to talk about. Now we're looking at a... 40-minute stream. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> How's everybody holding up? Any questions about calc? Or my stupid method of dosing? Or anything like that? I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything exciting lately. What's the difference? What's the Profilux 4 and Profilux 4E? Profilux 4E does not have ORP and salinity. I think that's it. Um, so the 4E is kind of the competitor to the EL, the Apex EL. And the Profilux 4 is the competitor to the regular old Apex. GHL also has the mini Wi-Fi. So if you just want to do some monitoring and some very minor control, take a look at that. Because that mini Wi-Fi set is a pretty pretty damn good deal for what it is. And hopefully GHL just continues to add little features here and there. And makes that thing the budget winner in controllers. Period. There ain't no better option as far as I'm concerned. Then if you want a little more than that, jump up to the 4E. Which gives you just about the same performance as a, as a 4 Without ORP. I don't understand ORP anyway, but I do watch it. And uh, what's up, Moki? And the... Uh, and Salinity. But if you're smart, you got a HANA Salinity Checker. That way you can also calibrate your thermometers or your ink birds or your whatevers because the temperature of that HANA Salinity Checker is good. Just leave it in a tank a little while. Let it warm up. Not on topic, but was looking at the OR2 and saw they're selling the OR3. I do know the difference, Neil. The OR3s come with dual chip 5-watt LEDs. So the OR2 was a 3-watt LED bar, focused bar with lenses. So... Tighter beam, not like a reef, or yeah, not like a reef bright that has a really nice flood like a T5. The OR2 has a narrower beam, um, so you got to mount that thing higher. Um, that's kind of what it's for. <clears throat> uh, think about it like reef bright is wide, mount it low with T5s because T5s T5s are like damn near on the deck. Whatever, they're like seven inches off the water maybe, and then uh, OR2s. Or threes, focus beams, mount them up higher, nine, ten inches with big Haas LEDs like a XR30 or a Mitris LX7. So, uh, what I I have not tested an OR3, but I know people have bought them, and. Uh, they like them. And I really, really like the spectrum of an OR2. And if the OR3 is replicating the OR2, that is the magic spectrum bar, as far as I'm concerned. What's up, Dar Sanchez? Um, what is ORP? I, I don't know. It is some measurement of cleanliness in the tank. Like if people run ozone their ORP is higher and their tanks are, are indicated as being cleaner. But don't listen to me. Go look that up yourself because I might be wrong. I track ORP. It's like two to 300 somewhere in there. I hear cleaner tanks are higher. I don't know what that's going to get me. I don't know what that does. So it's just some other graph that I look at. Now, if I see that it's way different, then I'm paying attention because something obviously changed. I use ORP, pH, that's it, as indicators of tank health. So as long as they keep doing the same thing every day, then I'm fine. If something changes in either one of those, um, 
then I, I'm paying attention. Yeah, Neil. I was impressed too. I underestimated that light. I thought because there's 410 to 480 nanometers in, a, in an Orphic OR2, 410 to 480, in a bar that I'm not going to get good coverage throughout the length of that bar. But because you raise that thing up a little higher than you do a Reef Bright, <clears throat> it obviously looked like it had some pretty slick blending on the spectrometer. So I was impressed. Good numbers, too. Good bar numbers, too. I'll, if I didn't post... No, I think I did post that. If I didn't, hit me up. DM me, and I'll give you the numbers. That's all I had. We jumped in late. I can't show this. I have this cool bar holding my iPad. Now my iPad is my second monitor. Using this app called... Uh, duet so with the pc i'm on a pc right now the pc is hooked up to the ipad wirelessly and treating it like a second display and it works really well so what i want to do is like put zoom and other crap over here on this display so i don't have to worry about windowed stuff when i'm playing with obs which is how i'm uh transmitting the stream uh, at, I have not tested the Atlantics, so I can't speak to them. There is one hell of a following for those lights. People really like those lights. Um, but, uh, I haven't tested an Atlantic from, um, Orphic, so I can't speak to that. Ricardo, Reef Bright is the way to go. It depends on your use case. If you're going to use a Reef Bright with T5s or an installation of LEDs that are very low to the water? Absolutely. It's going to it's going to flood the tank like uh like a T5. It's a very even blanket of light. It's not focused. It's just a blanket of light, so it looks really nice. That's a 450 and 470 nanometer light. So, if you're going to use it low to the tank, totally. If you're going to mount it higher, then, then you should take a look at the Orphix. Same price range. Um, one's made for a low installation, and one's made for a high installation. Like on this tank, these are high. This is like 9 inches off the water. I would probably hang a, an Orphix on the side if I was going to add some lights Back when I had this thing installed, that's a Reef Bright underneath. And this was really low on the water because these 150-watt XR30s didn't have a lot of kick to them. So I had this light low. Um, so I had a Reef Bright right there in the middle illuminating that thing. Reef Bright is the way to go. Reef Bright's the way to go if it's low. Orphix the way to go if it's high. You got the new Reef Bright... Loom Light Pro Actinic Blue. So what's what's that light? I have experience with the XHOs. What what's the wattage on that Luma Light Pro? I'm looking. <clears throat> you know what I want to play with? I want to play with uh, metal halides, and I want to I want to. I want to get one of those sweet reef bright metal halide bulbs and understand that. Understand the heat that comes off those things. Understand the par that comes off that. Um, because I haven't done it before, so it would be really cool to, to learn. Reef bright, the professional's choice. <clears throat> I was talking with the owner of reef bright last night over DMs and... Uh, that guy's cool, and he knows his products, and he was very informative. I am scrolling to LumaLite Pro. What size you get? To complement your Hydro 32, which is, Hydro 32 is what? 
Did anybody look that up while I was on here? Is that a 100 watt light? 90 watt light? This thing comes in an 8, 18, 24 inch. I have not used this light. I would. Compatible with LED timers, cable adapters, also controlled Apex controllers, Apex server. I would, I would like to see an 8 inch. I'll have to check this out. Does it come in just a blue? Yeah, 50 50, actinic blue, white, and some other funky version. That's probably for planted tanks, right? So, an 8 inch version of this, uh, that would be cool. Actually, if I got a 24 inch, then I could do an apples to apples and I could see what kind of oomph that thing's putting out. That would be kind of neat. Jim, if you know Bryce, I know Bryce. He has four MH fixtures. Oh. Oh, he does. Okay. I shall beg for his assistance and hit him up. 18 inch. Yeah. So, Ricardo, hit me up. DM me. Let me know how it goes. I'd like to know. <clears throat> I'd like to know how that works out for you. Yeah, Neil, that would suck out loud. I don't know what kind of heat those fixtures put out. I've seen those power supplies. They call those ballasts, right, like they do with T5s. <clears throat> that would be pretty hot. That's why people run chillers with halide tanks, right, because the amount of heat those things put off. I would just like to scope it with a spectrometer so I know what it's doing. Right, because metal halide was the thing. That's what everybody did. And then somebody had the kick-ass metal halide bulb, and then that's where ATI Blue Plus came from. ATI Blue Plus tried to mimic the goodness that was the metal halide, only the halide had the par, and the T5 didn't. Whatever, there was those super high output something-something T12s, right? <clears throat> now we got T5s. I think 12s are gone. 8s are on their way out. T5s will be next, but um, that puts a T5 on the deck as close as the water is you need to get the par you need right it'd be interesting just to see what an mh looks like underneath the spectrometer just for apples to apples um that's all i got i think i covered everything i went through it kind of quick we talked We talk this guy. Don't be this guy. Don't do it. It's hard to park at the grocery store these days. Don't do it. Wait, what Neil say? No matter what LEDs or T5s, we have to run chillers. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. It, I got a freeze warning tonight, Neil. I'm not going to feel too bad for you. I understand your heat woes. But it's going to be in the low 30s tonight. It's freaking May. If you walk outside, you're in the Caribbean. And it's nice out, right? Run a chiller. Get some solar. <laughs> we talked this silliness that was sitting on top of my frag tank, which is now gone. Note how often I clean the fan. I think that's worth zooming in on. Look at, look at. Somebody asked me today, at what point does this fan turn on? Like, if you're running the light too hot, what's too hot and turns on the fan? I'm like, hell, I don't know. I never heard the fan because it was all clogged up with crap. Worked good, though. Never broke. That's a good light. You know what? For that matter, same for these Ecotechs, these old Gen 2s. They just sit there right over the water and they just keep sucking up salt water and they just keep running. There's something to be said about that. But now we got the we got the hot new fancy sitting on top of the tank, which is those Mitris LX7s. <clears throat> this one is absolutely AB+. I may turn down the whites a little bit. It's, it's AB plus white. Mm, I like a little bluer. Or I'm just going to leave it alone and see what happens. 
uh, got them all lined up with mega beam extruded aluminum. That's what it looks like over the frag tank. That's what the frag tank looks like. Moki, if you're still on there, I don't know if you are. That clamp's coming for you. Get ready, bro. And see, the color looks a little different, too. Right? It looks a little more... Some people run white tanks. This is a little more white. This is kind of like that. This ain't a this ain't a 10k. I don't know where this is. Seven? Six? Seven? Maybe around seven. We talked about this here Red Sea bite light that if you find cheap and you add a 470 bar to it, that's a pretty good buy. Watch that power supply though. Don't put that on something hot because it's already super hot. This is a spectrum, super narrow 450, add a 470, and you got effectively a reef bright with a little bit of white and some UV. So that would be pretty cool. A reef bright looks like this. Comes down with a 450 and it bumps out here to a 470 and then it comes down. That's not uh, that's not at all a bad spectrum. Calc, put it in a container, shake it up. Take it in, refill your dosing container, take it back out and put it in a garage. Next day, come back in, refill it. You don't need anything fancy. You just need a container that can come like this. You need a timer, and you need a dose and pump. This is the 1.1 ml from uh, BRS. And that's my dog. And that's what I got. Sweet, right? No more dog. Bye, Lucy. Bye, Lucy. Oh, what I turn off? Oh, I turn off chat. <sighs> All right. That's it. I'm going to go downstairs, watch TV, see what's going on. 20, 22, con oh, 23 concurrent viewers, seven likes. Y'all are awesome. I appreciate that. Pull up the Orphic. What's up, Lynn? Oh, see, now we got to go back because Lynn jumped in. And Lynn is the reason why I got to play. Not with Lucy, because she likes to play. With that. Hey, Lynn, what's up with the mount? Why is the mount so big and goony goo goo? You can pinch your fingers in there, too. But whatever. It works. <laughs> Thanks. That's my dog, Lucy. <clears throat> Lynn's the one that let me borrow this light. Timer is a near pow. We'll go back. Take a look. I can zoom in a little. See that near pow? Write that down. I'm going to drink my beer. All right, Evan. You got that? Uh, fill up. So two things. <clears throat> what are your settings like on your AI Prime? I pin the fake UV and the blues. Any of those blue purple channels, I pin those all the way to the top. And then I drop the whites, reds, and greens down. So like 25% reds, greens, whites, and then you should be good. Do I sell the pucks? Rapid LED sells the pucks. Um, that's just a, an AG 450 nanometer. Actually, it looks surprisingly like... Uh, it looks like... Oh, now we're getting funky. It looks just like this. It has this peak. If you get rid of all of this crap over here, this legit UV and this violet and you get rid of this white, that's what that puck looks like. It's exactly like this. It's 450 nanometers. Um, Rabbit LED sells those lights. Ooh. They look like that, just that little puck, and it comes with the um, dimmer, PWM, pulse width modulation dimmer module on it as well as the power plug. And there's also a PWM connector right here. So I took all that crap off. I don't need that. 
All I wanted was the metal body itself and the four LEDs with the lens. And then I build, I, I cut, I create an acrylic housing for that stripped down puck. <clears throat> um, and the power supply I'm using, which is their dimmable, zero to 10 dimmable power supply, which doesn't have a, doesn't have a high value cutoff, which means, what's up, Brandon? Which means you can drive zero to 10 all the way to off. So my GHL Profilux 4 driving that puck will take it from no light to 100%, all with 0 to 10 with the power supply. That power supply can also power 1, 2, or 3 pucks. So you could have a fixture that has 3 of those pucks in a row, and that fixture is nothing more than acrylic that I cut. So will I sell you an acrylic body? For your light, maybe, but you can go to Rapid LED and buy the pucks yourself, and you can either figure out how to mount them up, or you can uh, DM me, and maybe we can work something out. I haven't made one for anybody yet, and I'm absolutely still prototyping mine, so I'm not ready to uh, make kits for them, but I can. That's something we can talk about. <laughs> It angles towards the tank too much. This is going back to Lynn's question about the uh, about the Red Sea light mount. It angles towards the tank too much. It angles towards like the back because it's so damn nose heavy. Maybe. 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 Something like that. <clears throat> Philip, you near me? Are you a you a Marylander? Maybe I'm supposed to already know this, and I apologize if I don't. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that light didn't suck. I expected it to suck, and it really didn't suck. But like I said, add a 470 bar to it, and you got uh, you got a little piece of magic. That's what I would do. Back to the crazy. <clears throat> oh, right on. I work in Baltimore. When I go to work. Which ain't that often. So yeah, hit me up. Alright y'all. 8.30. That's an hour. Uh, I appreciate y'all hanging out. If there are no more questions, then I'll give it just a few seconds because there's a little bit of a delay. But if there's no more questions, always, as always, um, feel free, please, to DM me, hit me up, ask questions, talk about the things that I've posted before. Um... The only lights I've not used are metal halides. I've absolutely used T5s, T5 hybrids, cheap LEDs, expensive LEDs. Uh, I have mashed up, obviously. <laughs> I have mashed up LEDs to give me the spectrum that I'm looking for. Um, and I posted, I think I posted the spectrum of this setup and if you saw that in a production light you'd be like damn that's a good spectrum and it was it looked really really good um but that was too messy so now on to this and this is fun i like it it's nice and clean so uh like i said as always hit me up happy to try to help i may not be able to help but always happy to try to help um i guess that's it right happy reefing and be kind everyone thanks bye